notifications are just uh, off the chain. Yeah, the uh, the knockout video's got 240k views on the uh, on the zone boxing Twitter. Just tweets after tweets after tweets after tweets after tweets <laughs> after tweets after tweets after tweets. After tweets. I, it goes on. It just goes on. You must have felt good, mate, when you rocked up at that bar last night in the hotel. Yeah. I Everyone think, applauding you back in the room. Yeah, I was missing a big fat gold chain and a Cuban <laughs> cigar, but I had the glasses. But that's, uh, yeah, that's all he had. So just give us a clap. Well, Jordan Gill, uh, the new European featherweight champion, it's the morning after the night before. Just from a health perspective, I know those glasses aren't, a style choice. Um, you spent a few hours in the hospital last night. Just how are you and, and, and how are you feeling this morning? Yeah, it was a bit inconvenient. They made me go. Um, obviously, I knew I was fine. Um, I always swell up. Um, I've got just that kind of skin that marks up easy. And uh, sometimes I swell up. I remember going before where my eyes swelled up so quickly that they think, obviously, it looks like it could be an orbital fracture. So it's better to be safe than sorry. They wanted uh, me to go and, and make sure that it was nothing wrong and, and no no fracture. So when I got a CT start, scan, everything's fine, all good to go, no fractures and uh, just two perfect eardrums and a, and a dicky knee. And I hear you've not slept and even had a few full fat uh, cokes last night to, to celebrate. Is that true? I have uh, cans of coke, not kilos of coke. So <laughs> it's all good. Um, the dust may have settled a little bit now, Jordan, but that was. You know, in the two and a half years I've been at Matcham, probably the most incredible turnaround I've ever seen in a boxing ring. If you can begin, first of all, can you try to sum up how you do reflect on last night? Yeah, so I mean, it's not really sunk in for me yet. I've, I've, like you said, I've not slept. I never do the night after a fight. Um, so, yeah, it's still in my mind uh, thinking about the fight. Well, your perception of a fight as a fighter is completely different when you're in there to when you watch it back. Obviously, it felt like it was a close fight. It was nip and tuck. I weren't doing, um, you know, I was obviously starting a little bit slow. It felt like I was warming into it and it perforated my eardrums and that took away my balance completely. And I perforated my eardrum before and usually it's just like a shh, like in, in one ear. But both my ear, eardrums are ruptured. So the balance went completely. I've never had that in my life where my balance just goes. And uh, it was a weird feeling. So like my legs have never betrayed me. I've never been dropped with a headshot. Um, so yeah, it was a weird feeling. I didn't have no balance whatsoever. So we had to basically go to the ropes and, and allow the ropes to prop me up and uh, you know use defense and uh, be like a, a little James Tony and, <laughs> and find a shot. It was quite incredible seeing the, the way you were in the corner because you survived some really tough moments in that fight, been badly hurt in the seventh. Um, in, through round eight, it, it was a bit of an onslaught as well from Gwerfi, but what, what's the message from Dave just, just to sit in the corner and maybe try and land that shot? Was it more just to see if you could get a bit of your sense back? What what was the, the, the tactic at that stage of the fight? Yeah, well, to be honest, the, the senses was never gone. I was always, I always knew what I was up to. It was just my balance on my legs. So I've got, I was harboring a knee injury anyway and then because of my um, ears uh, being perforated the balance was completely gone so it was like my legs are betraying me on a balance level but my senses are still there I can still make the right decisions you can see me slipping the shots and, and rolling out the shots but and covering up and defending but you know it was a case where I had to go to the ropes obviously that forced him to pile on the pressure which was making him work harder and that was going to deplete him and probably open up something for me as well. So, you know, that's what happened. Um, he, he was trying to unload in the eighth and, and start the ninth, gas a little bit maybe. Uh, I noticed he was dropping his left hand when he was throwing his jab and uh, I caught him in the eighth with a overhand right, rocked him back on his heels and I thought, right, that's the shot I'm going to get him with. And uh, I timed it perfectly in the ninth, and uh, the shot, a shot from the gods. What do you recall about about those final moments? Because from our perspective, it looked like the fight was maybe ten seconds from, from being over. You know, we thought at the end of that round with the hematoma swelling that Dave would probably pull you out at the end of that round. But 
blimey, the, the eruptions ringside, the eruptions backstage. What do you recall about those final moments in that right hand landing? Yeah, I mean, I needed to do it, and I did it. Um, you know, Eddie put the pressure on in the in the press conference and said it was a must win fight, um, and that that probably didn't help me from the start because I put the pressure on myself as well. And and you know, from the start, I did start slow because I was a little bit tense. Um, I knew how important for this fight was. That European title means everything to me, so I, w- I was trying very hard to win it, and you know that probably took me out my stride to start with. Um, so I didn't box as well as I should have done, and didn't get into the right rhythm. But um, I knew I was in that mindset where no matter what he does, no matter what I have to go through, there's no way that I'm losing this fight. I was willing to die in that ring, and uh, I was willing to do anything, and and I found the shot. At the O2 Arena, it's an interesting little setup. So Dave's told me last night he, he could see you and it almost seems like you're waiting an eternity for that music to come on to start your ring walk. You're talking about um, the pressure being put on from Eddie about the fight being must win. He, he said, look, I know my kid, he looked really nervous. Were, were you feeling it as you were heading into the ring, that pressure? Um, yeah, a little bit. You know, it was it was my moment. It was my biggest fight in my life. Um, and like, like I said, you know, I feel like it's a bit harsh saying it's must win because I am 27. Um, you know, I've I've got a lot of time left in the sport, so you know. I think I think it it wasn't must win, but you know to get where I, I need to go, every fight's must win. So yeah, I I, I put the pressure on myself, and uh, I felt the pressure. So I wasn't obviously I was I was I was had the butterflies, which I think everybody does, but I wasn't like really nervous. After the Tanoko fight. Um... We know you were real, of course, and we know what the situation was heading into that fight and why it played a factor into what happened. But people questioned your heart to dig in and, and your desire, didn't they, uh, after after what happened that night. But how good does it feel to to have certainly proved all of those that was wrong with that showing last night? Well, that's the thing as well. Even without the Tonoko fight, when you're a boxer, people assume that you're not tough because you choose to box. Why would you choose to stand and have a fight if, if, if you can box? You know, people assume that you're not tough, but I know that there's no one tougher than me. I know I can dig deep. I know I can give it all. I know I'll fight to the death. Um, so, last sometimes at some points in your life you have to prove it. And and last night was one of those nights. So, yeah, obviously in the Tonoko fight, I was a shadow of myself, and uh, you know I couldn't hold a body shot in that fight because of illness and and, and other things that went on. And, you know, I've got no regrets because that uh, going through that experience made me a better fighter and, and made me what I am today. But, you know, obviously people thought that I, I, I'm i not tough and, and I haven't got the, the heart for it. But I think I did prove that last night. Um, when the going gets tough, I can gr- grit my teeth and, and, and plough through. After the knockdown, there was quite a surreal moment where... WWE DDT style, you were dragged to the floor by Kareem Guffey and it looked like, even if it was just momentarily, that you were certainly very dazed when your head hit the canvas. Uh, have you watched that clip back and what did you, what was going through your mind at that time? What do you remember from, from that few seconds? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a top class wrestling move. I have to give him <laughs> credit. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a perfect execution of a DDT. So, uh, yeah, fair play. I think he knew exactly what he was doing, and literally the whole weight of my body landed on my on my head. And I think my dad said to me, "I thought you broke your neck when you went down." And uh, I watched it back. It looked like I was knocked out for a second, and it probably was. But I knew it was must win, so I had to uh, get myself up and carry on. And and I did. Um, I saw that round out. Obviously, I had a few few more sketchy rounds. The ears were already perforated at that point, so could could only do what I could do. And um, I'm a freight train. I don't stop until the job's done. And, uh, you know, I would have made it to the end of that fight, win, lose, or draw. But I didn't have to. Have you seen the uh, the version of that clip with the WWE commentary over the top? No, I've not. <laughs> I'll have to show you that afterwards. Yeah. Um, that's gone just about as viral as the original video. It's it? brilliant, so... Um, let's just talk about Kareem Gurphy. Um, of course, he was the European champion heading into this fight. I suppose, as a fighter, when you when you share that type of experience in the ring with another man, is it nothing but respect? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, he's a nice guy. He's been he's been a pleasure to be around all week. To be honest, you know, he's been making 
jokes and and being friendly and you know i've got utmost respect for him there's never any needle between us um he's a good guy he's gone back to his um you know beautiful daughter and, and his wife wife today so you know i wish him the best in his, in his career and i'm sure he'll come back with some big good wins because he is a solid fighter um he's up at featherweight now and he seems a real force i think it was a well-known fact that Bantamweight was absolutely killing him. And he said to me that he's got a new lease of life at Featherweight and he feels like a new man. And I think we saw it in the ring last night. I don't think we've seen a, a polished girthy like that for a long time. And, uh, you know, it half took me by surprise because obviously he is coming to the back end of his career. But everyone's still got that one left in him. And, and I think he he had that last night. He knew he was up against it, against me. And, uh, and, he, and he had a few good rounds. So... Yeah, fair play to him. He made a really good fight of it and uh, it was a pleasure sharing a ring with him. And my stock has risen and my experience has risen. My ring IQ is going to rise again. I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I'm going to learn from that fight and I'm going to become a better fight for it. And uh, that's the European level conquered. You know, he's four-time European champion. They don't give them belts away. He's, he is that level and he, he's a solid, solid operator at European level. So I've passed that test. I can move on, um, whether it's a European title defence or whether it's a uh, world title eliminator, that's the, that's the progression. Just final one before we come on to what might be next for later this year. Just grab that belt for you behind me, Jordan, and, and hold it for me because what, what I said to you during the week is you might have felt like the gods were even turning on you when you saw the O2 Arena blowing into the River Thames at the start of the week. After everything you've been through from illnesses to head clashes and, and everything in between with injury, to have that on your lap, but does it make all those difficult times worth it? Yeah, um, it's it's been a long road to get to this point. You know, the European title has been a goal of mine for a long, long time. And um, I feel like there's something to learn at every level. And, and I wanted to, you know, get to get to this European title level and, and, and conquer this before I moved on. You know, I've had the domestic fights. I won the Commonwealth against Ryan Doyle. I boxed Jason Cullum in a, in a great fight who went on to win British Commonwealth European. Um, I boxed Reese Pilotti, who was Commonwealth champion as well. I beat all those guys at domestic level. Kareem Gurphy is a solid, you know, four-time European champion. doesn't get better at European level than him. I can't think of another person that's won four European titles. So, you know, I don't think anybody knows what I've had to go through apart from me to get to this. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of uh, hard times. And a lot of uh, sleepless nights and and uh, stress, but we're here now and we can push on, and we can uh, carry on being positive. Um, we've gone through the the sticky patches now, and I feel like we can really push on and make a dent. Dave, uh, who's just entered the room, actually, we're going to bring him in uh, shortly. He's talked about getting a first defence under your belt before pushing on and seeing what's on offer at world level. Isaac Lowe is. One man you, you've, you've mentioned, I don't think uh, you're too fond of him. Is that a fight you'd like to see uh, maybe put for your first defence of a European crown? Yeah, I mean, I'm open to that fight. Um, I think a lot of people are calling for that fight. Like I said, I've boxed domestic guys. I've boxed Reese Bolotti. I've boxed Ryan Doyle. I've boxed Jason Cullinan. They're all established champions. And Isaac Lowe's another domestic fighter, um, probably above domestic level. So that makes it a great fight for the European title. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. There's been a bit of back and forth on social media. Um, he's he's uh, done a few interviews, uh, intoxicated probably, uh, definitely, uh, where he's he's uh, you know offered me out, gonna kill me stone dead, and uh, it is what it is. I think uh, whether he wants to fight deep down, we'll see. But if he does, he can get it, and I will uh, I will deal with the dosser. It's certainly a fight we'd love to see. Just heading into last night, you were already well positioned with the IBF and we know what winning that EBU belt does for pushing fighters up the rankings. Big fight coming up in Leeds, Josh Warrington and Kiko Martinez. Perhaps at the end of the year, would you fancy the winner? Definitely, definitely. Josh Warrington, Kiko Martinez, whoever wins that fight, that's a great fight for me. Because I remember, Jordan, when I was in the gym with you, where when the Kanju fight sort of fell out and we didn't know what Josh was going to do at the start of last year, you were like, look, throw me in. I want that fight now. I'm ready for that fight now. Yeah. So, you know, as much as what you've achieved last night is fantastic, you're ready to, to go even further and really let yourself off the leash against these top guys. Yeah, well, if you didn't know before last night, 
you know now I'm game and uh, uh, we're, we're ready. And your boy uh, Lee Wood uh, in a big fight. I, I, it's interesting. I actually spoke to the zone about before this fight about you being good for the presentation desk, mainly because you you know Lee and you've sparred many rounds uh, with both guys. But after last night, would you like to be there and, and be part of the broadcast team for that fight? Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, the the bruises will heal by then. And I won't be really ugly. I'll just be my normal ugly state. So, uh, yeah, I will, I'll just be ugly, not really, really ugly. Just so, a little bit. Yeah, I'll be good enough for TV because, yeah, I'd love to be part of that 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 team and I'd love to present and and give my take on the fight and it'd be a great fight to, to be involved with. I'm looking forward to that fight and we're back in the man, Lee. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really exciting fight. Uh, we're expecting a, a great atmosphere that night in, in Nottingham, of course, a lot of Belfast boys coming over uh, to support Mick Conlon. Is it a fight you believe Lee can come through? Is he maybe the underdog in this fight? Um, he's a champion. Um, end of the day, he's a champion. He's uh, got the home support. Like again, he's got everything in his favour. So, you know, Mick's not boxer at that level. Um, he's not beat a guy like Kanzu. He's not like Kanzu was a pound for pound. Um, or he's he's a ring magazine number one featherweight in the world. So, yeah, I think Lee. I'd make Lee favourite. He's got more power. He's got. He's had more fights under his belt. Um, he's come up the hard way. He's not had that Olympic pedigree, the backing that, that he's had from top rank. So, yeah, I'd make Lee the favourite. And I think Lee's going to make him work hard from the start. I feel like Conlon's going to feel the pace a little bit towards the back end. And Lee carries his power through the 12 rounds. So I, I expect Lee to, to finish him off late. Well, Jordan Gill, um, amazing. Seeing his last night, we can't wait for what is to come next. Is there, is there any way you'd like to, to try to attempt to round off uh, the whole experience for this week? No. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Um, I'm a European champion. We've done it. Uh, we've conquered the mission. And I'm going to go and take my wife out for dinner because I haven't done it for months and months on end. Lovely. And uh, I don't miss her, but I think she misses me. So yeah. You're a bit of a big timer now as well. So. Yeah, I mean, I won't mm. take the glasses off for it, really. <laughs> well, Dave, we've just had a... A great chat with with Jordan, uh, just having a bit of reflection on what was an incredible, incredible fight last night and an incredible moment for Jordan's career. Um, you've had a few hours sleep, not a lot of sleep, but um, <laughs> how uh, how are you feeling this morning? Um, just just on cloud nine, absolutely buzzing. It's uh, yeah, it meant a lot last night. Let's just talk about some of the key moments of that fight. With it, after the knockdown and the eardrums went, it looked like Jordan's legs. Had completely gone. We now know that's because the, the eardrums, both eardrums, had been perforated. What were you saying to him at that stage in terms of just sitting in the corner and, and, and trying to weather the storm a little bit? Um, just that really. Um, I knew that because of what we do in the gym and what he does in the gym, I knew that if I could keep him to stay focused to to because his head was clear, everything was clear about him. It's just the the, the balance and unsteadiness on the legs. Um, so once you know that they can't cope with it, you know, centre ring, I wanted him to use his, use the ropes to stabilise himself. And I know that he's, and I want him to trust in his defence, you know, what he does day in, day out in the gym. I want him to trust himself. Um, and I knew that if he did, I just said to him, he's gonna, he's gonna think he's got you and he's gonna blow himself out. As long as you don't take it, the big shots and you're riding him, you're blocking and you're slipping. He will be missing, missing, missing. And we all know that that tires fighters out. And then when you pick your moments, you stab him, you give him a little the odd shot here and there downstairs to keep sapping him, sapping him, use the jab. And then um, it will come. And just to trust himself. And he did it for the first round and came back. We had a chat, went back out, did it again. Um, and I could see Gwerthy physically wilting, gassing, tiring. And... He was, he was bang on. His, his little setup for the for the right hand at the finish was was beautiful. It was brilliant, and it was, it was, it was just I can't explain to you when when he lands because obviously he's in my corner, um, and when that shot lands, oh, you just you know when you just know they're not getting up, it's just unbelievable. You've been involved in some fantastic nights <laughs> uh, in your career, you know, and obviously 
with with Tony and, and so many other great fighters. Where does that rank for you? Do you know what? I was thinking about this. European title wins for me. I've had I've been involved in some great fighters. Bellew Masnake was a tough fight and hard fight. Um, when Ryan Rhodes boxed Jamie Moore, that was an amazing night as well. Dramatic. This one, this one beats everything. <laughs> it was right up there for 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 having to for the fight having to adapt, navigate, go through what you had to go through, um, and then finish it in such a fashion, in such dramatic way. It was just, it's just right up there. The swelling on Jordan's eye looked looked really bad uh, at one point, and I just wonder towards. The end of that round before the, the finish that we saw, Andy Lee was saying on commentary that Dave needs to have a real good look mm. about pulling his fighter out here. Would you think perhaps you would have pulled him out at the end of that round? It, because of the eye, yes. Not because of his um, awareness or it, it wasn't like he was like I said. Well, you know, fighters can be droggy, uh, groggy mentally because of being hit with a shot. I mean, it wasn't that. Um, it was it was more the eye because you saw the speed of it coming up. I remember when he boxed uh, Jason Cunningham a few years back, his eye came up like that really quick. He, he marks up, he does mark up badly, but it's with the, I think it's the hematoma, they call it the way, how it just mm. pops right up. Um, and they swell up rapidly and keep trying, as we've seen with, with the state of his face um, later on last night. Um, but yeah, so the eye was a concern, but him himself, he was fine, but you knew that the referee was going to stop it, at, you know, Probably at the end of that round, a round after anyway. But um, the the problem is that you've got to think of as well is because he's he's there, he's everything's. Uh, while ever he's able to follow my instructions and he's able to follow what he does in the gym and he's comfortable with it and he knows what he's doing, then he's in there to win it because we know what that fight meant to him and we know the pressure was under had he not won that fight. So I had to give him every chance. Because of what it was, you know, um, that's that's the call that you have to make. But you have to know your fighter, and, and I know my fighter. But the, the the problem for me was the eye. How uh, proud are you, Dave? I'm, I was talking mm. to Jordan about this. Even just the, the little moments of him arriving back at the hotel and everyone's applauding him back into the lobby. How much after everything he's been through mm. do, does he deserve this moment? And how proud are you that everything. he's finally having it? Everything. This is this is for me. It's as big as anything I've ever had. Let's just talk about what could come next. Uh, mm. We're going to let him dine on this for a little while, and, and rightfully so, but maybe a, a nice little defence against Isaac Lowe. Would you fancy that? Yeah, yeah. I'm calling it a little defence. I think that's a big one. I've seen a few <laughs> videos from, from Isaac um, uh, that he's put out about Jordan. He's not. He's definitely not Jordan's favourite person. Um, that'd be a good fight. That'd be a nice... I've never seen Jordan in a... in a in like a grudge sort of... Act. No, nobody else really dislikes Jordan. No, he's a nice guy. He's a nice kid, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to see that, that's that's quite different. And that would be, be good for his experience again. It's another one. But it would be, it'd be fun to see him because he's very dry and witty. And, I mean, he's, he's a funny guy in the gym. And, and I think with someone like Isaac, he's, you would see that in him because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the build-up, obviously. It wouldn't be funny in the ring. Um, but it would be a good fight. I think both of them have proved themselves. Um, uh, the levels that they're at, and it's a nice, nice European defense, but also a world title eliminator. You know, it, that that could be because Isaac's ranked well as well, um, Jordan. So I think it it's a fight that makes sense. I think it's a fight that makes sense for Eddie, um, and to promote and for the fans because they'd be interested in. But ultimately, it's a really good fight. It's a really really good fight. How would you feel, Dave? Uh, saying this to Jordan as well. Very well ranked with the IBF heading into last night. We know what that European title mm. does for pushing him up the rankings. Would you be happy to, to see him face the winner of Kiko and Josh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, again, look at the stage of, of, of their careers. Um, I think all fighters need, before they go into that, um, or I like to see, before they go into that world level, the, the, the top world level, um, they need to tick boxes for themselves and it's not about us and what we think and, and, and fans and what they think opinions of them but they need to know themselves what they've got in tank what when what happens if this happens can I handle this can I handle this and when fighters go through quite smoothly and don't really have those problems asked of them in a fight and then they go into a crack there's a lot of questions a lot of unknown territory there they're going into 
Um, obviously, Jordan suffered a defeat before, but then he's proved himself coming back from that with the fights that he had since then. He's proved himself since then. But then, last night is the first time since his defeat where he's had a fight where everything's going against him. He's about to lose. It's got, you know, it looks like he's going to lose. He's going to get knocked out. He's going to get stopped or whatever. And he's had to pull himself back. But more so physically, it was more mentally that he showed to himself there that actually, I can do this. I can come back. I can ride out the bad moments. I can pick myself up. I can manoeuvre my way through a, a minefield. Because in, in world-class boxing and, and world championship boxing, there are many times when you're losing rounds, you've got to be able to turn that round. There are many times when you're hurt, you've got to come through that. There are times when you are on the verge of getting stopped. And do you just go out or do you be smart and, and bring your way through it and find a way back? And he's, he's checked that box, box last night. For me, that's the last box that needed checking for, for Jordan Gill for himself. And so now, am I happy in him going forward into... into um, world level fights, world title fights, yes I am, because I, I feel now he knows himself, that's the biggest battle with him, it's never been about um, what I believe in, because oh, his dad believes in him, the team believes in him, because we know what he's capable of, because we see it day in and day out, but he needs to know what, what he needs to prove to himself I think, and he's, he's done everything like in that one fight last night, so so yeah, I'd be happy with that. Well Dave, uh, a great win, a great team, two great guys as well, two of boxing's good guys. Uh, we'll let you enjoy uh, enjoy your day and enjoy celebrating that win last night. We'll look forward to what's to come next month. Thanks, yes.